Hey guys, Miss Warren here. Um, today I'm gonna get started on my uh, landscape painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my sketch handy. So these are three of my sketching ideas. I decided I'm gonna go with this one because I also have a photo reference so I know where to put the lights and darks. So I'm gonna be kind of looking at my sketch, kind of looking like this, it, looking at this and approximating it. So that's the first thing that I wanna have. The next thing I wanna have is something to put under me because I'm gonna paint all the way to the edge of my paper. So I have like a little placemat here. You can use your portfolio and for this assignment, you need a 12 by 18 piece of paper. Do you see that this is about twice the size of my sketchbook? So this is the size we're gonna be using for this assignment. Now, I might do some more examples later on where I do it on a smaller sheet of paper like this, but that's just because I want to show you something quickly instead of doing a whole large paper. But for your final landscape painting for my class, you need this size paper. Okay, other things I have is a cup of water, um, paper towel, and a paintbrush. Now, for your base coat to start with, I recommend the largest brush that you have. You can totally do it with a smaller brush. It will just take you longer. You can also do this with a sponge, like if you have a sponge and you wanna get some texture to just do your base coat for your background, that would be an option as well. But I'm gonna be using, I believe this is about a one inch brush, um, kind of to get started. Now, got my water, got my brush, got my paper towel, got my placemat. Now, you want to know what color scheme you're going to be using. I'm going to be using a monochromatic, that means one color and it's tints and shades, um, and I'm going to be using blue as my hue. So the blue is my hue, and I've got some black and some white on here. Um, the other paint is kind of dried from yesterday, but I'm going to be mixing up some tints and shades of blue. Um, so you want to know your color scheme and you want to get it all ready for a, on your plate before you start. So I'm going to put that there. Now, I'm going to do a base coat. I want all of my paper covered in acrylic paint. I'm going to do kind of like the background lights and darks. And then I'm going to go back on top of it and start adding details and textures and objects um, like the the water and the tree and the bark on the tree so first i'm going to kind of take a look at the photograph that i'm referencing and look where my lights and darks are so the background is pretty dark on this one the water is pretty light and the tree is pretty light now most people if um if the sky is your lighting this one's kind of blocked off because there's trees in the way a lot of times the sky will be the lightest and it will get progressively darker or more pigmented as it goes further down the page so the other thing too is that i definitely want to show the rule of thirds so i'm going to lightly lightly sketch out where i want to put everything in my picture because this is wider this paper is wider than this is so about one third of the way in my page because one of the requirements for this assignment is to use the rule of thirds i'm going to put this tree because it's my main object so one third of the way into the page not too far to the side not exactly in the middle right about here this is where I'm gonna lightly sketch out that that tree is gonna go. It can be a little bit different than the original photograph, but this is what, I'm gonna lightly sketch that out. Then I'm gonna stretch this rocky place out because I want that waterfall in the second third of my picture. So here's the rock here and some tufts of grass. I'm gonna paint over most of this, but this is kind of a guideline. There's a little bit of a shore here, right behind the tree. And then that waterfall, little waterfall, spills out from behind the rocks in a, like a rushing white texture. I'm most likely gonna do this in medium blue and then put some white over the top of it after the medium blue dries. There's also a light rock here and some strings of grass coming from off the page down here. And then there's this other rock that's kind of tall. Okay, so I have my um, foreground. So this rock is in my detailed foreground. The base of this tree is in my foreground, things that are up close. I have my midground where the waterfall and these other rocks and this other tufts of grass. I'm going to put some grass up here are. And then I have my background. Now in this background here, I'm going to do, I'm going to change it just a little bit. I'm going to create, you can see a little bit of a rocky path there. 
create my rocky path, kind of coming up from behind this waterfall here, and this little like ledge. But then I think I'm gonna leave it to be the open sky, and I'm gonna put a few branches across this open sky to kind of break up the area, and maybe a few clouds. So I'm gonna change it a little bit from what it is in the picture. Okay, maybe I'll put like another few bushy trees, make them look like they're far away. Don't put a lot of detail on them. Like a little forest back here, but make it look like it's on a hill in the distance. Okay, so there I have my basic sketch. Now I'm gonna be looking at the lights and darks in this picture to kind of get me started. I'm gonna get some water in my brush because I know these paints have been sitting there a while, so they're probably pretty thick. And I think for, I'm gonna start with my lighter colors, which will be the sky and the where the water is. So I'm gonna get some white in here and I'm gonna get some blue. Now, if you add a lot of texture, you don't have to worry about doing the exact same tent if you're gonna paint texture over it, but I'm gonna mix a pile of tent up because I'm gonna be using that over a large portion of this paper. So I know I want the water light and I know I want the skylight. So I'm gonna just kind of paint over everything because I'm gonna go back and paint the details. I wanna get all the way to the edge of my paper. You see, this is why I have the placemat. I'm gonna get a little bit of water in this because I don't want this too transparent, but I want it to flow down in those the texture of the watercolor paper. The watercolor paper has a lot of texture to it, a lot of teeth to it. And I want my sky kind of smooth. I'm gonna put a little more white in the sky. My white's starting to dry out. It's getting a little bit thick. It's okay that I painted over my tree. When this dries, I'm gonna paint that tree right back there and I'm gonna paint it a nice dark color so it stands out from that sky. So there's my basic sky color. I wanna make the water probably similar to the sky color. I'm gonna put some more white on top of this water after it dries so you can see the splashing. A little bit more paint in my brush. You don't wanna to scrub too much. If your paper starts becoming balling up in little pills, then you're scrubbing your paper and you're tearing it up. You just wanna get it covered. You don't wanna scrub back and forth too much. I know I'm covering up that grass I drew, but I'm gonna paint that dark grass back over it after this dries. a little bit so I can get that edge. Okay, so now I've got my base kind of sky and watercolor down. Now I know that the land is much darker. Let me open up my phone again real quick. So my land is darker and especially up here is way darker. So I'm gonna put a regular hue. I'm gonna get a little bit of black and I'm gonna mix it in there because I want it kind of dark, rocky blue colors. And I can make it like vaguely like the rocky texture that I'm going to have, but I'm gonna go back over this and I'm gonna do the detail rock texture. Looks like there's some rock texture down here too. get a little bit more of this dark hue. Nice, good shade. Load my brush up. There we go. And I'm gonna have a lot of texture on my rocks, so it's okay. If it's not exactly smooth. I'm gonna go back in later Here's a rock on this side. Make sure that goes all the way to the edge of my paper and overlaps. Pardon me for the interruption. We do have a book change. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 
1051 is now 1093. 1051 is now 1093. Thank you. All the way to the edge of my paper. Okay. Now this area here, according to this picture, is a little bit darker. So I'm going to get just a slightly darker shade. Get some black in there. Differentiate it just a little bit. I'm just trying to get the whole basic color of the background down, and then I'm gonna go back through, make it a little bit more clear, do the textures and that sort of thing. Okay, now I'm gonna go back through here. Let me get the edge here make sure I got all the way to the edges. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm gonna go back with that light hue, or I should say tint of blue. Some more of that light blue. Probably got a little bit of gray in it, that's okay. I'm gonna go back, make sure I got all the way to the edge of the paper here. Got that water flowing out here. all the way to the edge. You can kind of see some reflection on this rock here, so I'm gonna... Okay, so now that I've got kind of my base outline, I'm gonna put some reflection for this rock here too, a little bit for here, and a little bit for these rocks. Now that I've got my base background all painted out, I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit so then I can start to paint my textures and shapes on top of it. So um, that's it for the background for today. If you wanna put a little more detail as you're putting in your background, you can, but the first thing you want to do before you do anything else is kinda get your base colors down. Um, go ahead and get what you need out and I look forward to seeing your work.